in this experiment we are going to find the specific latent heat of vaporization of water by using the method of mixtures so we are going to mix two substances in this case they are water and steam as you can see here this is called a steam generator and this is the calorimeter so this setup generates heat steam and that steam comes along with pipe and it mixes with water here by assuming that the heat supplied by steam to the water is completely absorbed by water and the calorimeter we can see that the heat supplied by steam is equal to heat absorbed by water and the calorimeter so that is the base of this experiment first let's consider the materials and apparatus required for this experiment you need a calorimeter thermometer that is calibrated from 0 to 50 centigrade and this styro and this part is called the steam generator and a tripod a wire mesh and this is the bulk of burn then there's this part which is called the steam trap this is the steam trap there's a this thermometer it is calibrated from 0 to 100 centigrade addition to that there's a heat insulating sheet between the steam generator and the calorimeter this could be made of uh, ready foam or asbestos so this is the complete experimental setup in order to find the specific latent heat of vaporization of water okay then let's consider the experimental procedure in order to do this experiment first you have to measure the mass of empty calorimeter with styro let's say that measurement is m1 so this is the mass of empty calorimeter with styro then you have to fill the calorimeter up to two thirds of its volume with water at room temperature. So that level could be somewhere here. Then you have to measure the mass of calorimeter with water. So there is also water in it now. Let's say that measurement is M2. And also you have to measure the initial temperature that is the temperature of water that we just put into the calorimeter let's say that measurement is theta 1 so theta 1 is the initial temperature of water okay now we are going to mix steam with water inside the calorimeter so for that we need this steam generator so this uh, steam generator is a large vessel containing water inside it. It has this uh, thermometer which is calibrated from 0 to 100 centigrade. And also it has this uh, pipe. It is submerged in water and it is also open to the outside air. The purpose of this pipe is to control pressure inside this vessel. Otherwise, as the heat is provided by this Bunsen burner, uh, the pressure would rapidly increase due to generation of steam. When that happens, you can see the water level inside this pipe rises. So if you have to quickly remove the Bunsen burner, so that water level again drops to the initial level. So, if the atmospheric pressure 
is one ATM. You can make sure that the pressure inside the vessel as well to be one ATM. But you have to make sure that the water level inside the pipe is same as the water level outside here. So at this level, pressure should be the same. Then if the atmospheric pressure is at 180 ATM, the water should boil at 100 centigrade. So you can say that the steam generated is at 100 centigrade. You can take that reading from here. Let's say that reading is about 100 centigrade. So let's say that reading is theta 2. So this is the temperature of steam, theta 2. So then what happens is that the steam comes along this pipe and enters into the steam trap. This also is a special apparatus. This part makes sure that the only dry steam enters into the carburetor. As you can see here, according to the arrangement here, uh, there could be water droplets coming via this pipe due to condensation of water and it will deposit below here and it will be removed. Liquid water would be removed via this pipe. Only the steam enters via this pipe and it will, it will strike the water surface of the calorimeter here. Then it starts to mix with water in the calorimeter. You have to keep stirring while doing this, you have to keep stirring, and after a while, you have to stop the steam of the stream coming into here and you have to keep stirring up and close the lid as well. Then keep stirring and record the maximum temperature given by this thermometer. So at that time we have concluded that this heat provided by the steam is completely absorbed by water and the calorimeter. Let's say that maximum temperature is theta 3, that temperature reading is theta 3. So mainly these are the measurements required in order to calculate the specific latent heat of vaporization of water. So you have to stop adding steam once the temperature of water has risen by about 10 centigrade. The final measurement we need is the mass of calorimeter plus water plus steam. Now the steam is added, you have to measure that, that, that mass as well. So we are going to measure the mass of the whole thing. That is water, calorimeter plus steam. Let's say that measurement is M3. Since uh, this, the mass of the steam could be a very small value, you have to measure this, take this measurement very carefully. So to take this measurement, we are going to use a triple beam balance. Okay, so these are the measurements we did. If I remind you those again, this is the mass of empty calorimeter with stir. M2, that is the mass of a calorimeter plus water. This is the initial temperature of water. This is the temperature of steam. This is the final temperature of the mixture. And this is the final mass of the mixture after adding steam. Then we need this to calculate, let's say we need mass of water. So by subtracting these two values, we can find mass of water. That is M2 minus M1. M1 is the empty calorimeter, 
M2 is calorimeter plus water. So by subtracting, you can find the mass of water only. Then this measurement that is mass of calorimeter plus water plus steam. So if you subtract M3 from M2, you can find the mass of steam added into the calorimeter. Then we can write some equation in order to find the specific heat capacity. We need these as well, like uh, let's say uh, Cl. Let's say that is the specific heat capacity of calorimeter material and Cw, that is the specific heat capacity of water. This we can find from a data book. Okay, then we have to write an equation using these terms in order to find the specific latent heat capacity of vaporization of water. Then we can write this equation heat supplied by steam is equal to heat gained by water plus calorimeter. Let's write an expression for heat supplied by steam. First, the steam has to turn into water. So for that, this is, let's say, the mass of the steam is M3 minus M2. Let's say capital L is the latent heat of water. Sorry, latent heat of steam. So this is the heat for conversion of steam into water. After converting that water, now we have water at 100 centigrade. That amount of water ha has to reach the temperature of the final temperature. It has to reach the final temperature. So for that, the mass of steam converted into water times Cw, specific capacity of water, times Temperature difference. The steam initial initially the steam was at theta two. Now it is at theta three. So the temperature difference should be theta two minus theta three. So this expression gives us the heat supplied by steam. Then you have to write an expression for heat gained by water plus calorimeter. So mass of water. Inside the calorimeter is M2 minus M1. Then the specific heat capacity. Initial temperature of water is theta 1. Now the whole system is at theta 3. That is the final temperature. So the temperature difference should be theta 3 minus theta 1. Then for the calorimeter, mass of calorimeter with this style is M1. Specific heat capacity of calorimeter material, and then the temperature difference that is theta 3 minus theta 1. For the calorimeter and water inside the calorimeter, we have the same temperature change. So, once you get this equation, all these measurements are already taken here, and these are just data taken from a data book. Now all you have to do is to substitute all those values here into these terms. Only term we all know is, is capital L, which is the specific latent heat of vaporization of water. All you have to do is do a simple calculation and find this capital L. So for this experiment as well, this is an experiment under method of pictures. We have to make sure that the heat loss to the surrounding is negligible. In two ways we can do this. One way is to make sure that the heat insulation of the calorimeter is good. Other way is to use compensation method. If I talk about the first 
first method, we will have to use a polished calorimeter. I mean, for the heat insulation, we have to use a polished calorimeter. So, using a polished calorimeter, we can minimize the heat radiating from the calorimeter. That is the heat loss due to radiation. We can minimize that using a polished calorimeter. Then, by uh, closing this, by an insulating leak while mixing styrofoam, while mixing steam, we can make sure that heat loss due to convection is also minimized. Uh, we have used this uh, external calorimeter as well for that, to make sure that the heat loss due to convection is minimized. Then, we have filled this with, I mean, between these two parameters, the space is filled with some heat insulating material. By doing that, we can make sure that heat loss due to conduction as well is minimized. So that is a one way to make sure that the heat loss to the surrounding is negligible. There's a better way for this. For that, we don't need heat insulation like this. All we have to do is to get the initial temperature of water below room temperature. Let's say room, room temperature is 25 centigrade. So initially, we will have to add some ice or in some other method. We have to cool the water inside calorimeter. Let's say we have cool that to about 20 centigrade. So the initial temperature of water is 20 centigrade now. Then you have to add the steam. As you add the steam and it gets mixed here and the temperature of water starts to increase to 25 centigrade. In this case, the room temperature. Then it further increases. Let's say it increases to about 30 centigrade. Now you have to stop adding steam into this. So within this range, within this temperature range, the heat is absorbed by the surrounding. Within this temperature range, heat is provided to the surrounding. Since these temperature ranges are equal, we can say the amount of heat absorbed from the surrounding and amount of heat released to the surrounding is are equal. So these two heat values are compensated. So that is the compensation method. It is the better way rather than using a heat insulation for the calorimeter. So I have mentioned that you have to lower the temperature of water inside this. But you have to make sure that this temperature, this 20 centigrade temperature, is above the dew point. So you have to measure the dew point of the room. Let's say the dew point is 18 centigrade. So it is okay to use this temperature as the initial temperature of water. If we have chosen the temperature below this dew point, there can be dew deposition on the surfaces of the calculator, which can cause an error to this experiment. So to prevent that, we have to make sure that the initial temperature of water has taken above the dew point. 